Hey guys, welcome to a very exciting game that is played between Levon Aronian and Sergei Karyakin. This game is played in the Bucharest uh, Rapid section that uh, just concluded. And uh, here in this game, Aronian has the white pieces and Karyakin has the black pieces. Both are grandmasters and it's a pretty exciting game. So let's get into it. We have e4 as an opening by Aronian and e5. Knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4. This is the Italian game and the bishop to c5. This is the Geico piano opening. And here, if you play b4, then it's uh, the fav my favorite Evans gambit. But unfortunately, it was not played in the game. Instead, c3 was played, which is uh, these days it's pretty, pretty famous. And uh, usually a lot of players will play these moves. <coughs> We have knight to f6 and d4. e takes d4, e5 and uh, this is immediately attacking the knight. Pretty interesting and crazy positions. Here, yes, you can move your knight back, you can move your knight to this square, but it's none of the options are really good. The better option is to play d5 and you are immediately attacking this light square bishop which is an important bishop in this opening. So you don't really want to give up the bishop. So you have to move the bishop and bishop goes to b5. You have knight to e4, c takes d4 and bishop to b6. <clears throat> Finally retreating with the bishop but still keeping some pressure on this pawn. And we have knight to c3, a developing move, also attacking this pawn here. Right now it's, uh, it's completely fine, it's defended by the queen, but once the queen moves then it, uh, it won't be really possible to defend it. So for now this queen cannot move from this, uh, this d file, unless and until you put this, uh, this bishop here and please defend the pawn. <clears throat> or you can defend it by putting your knight back, not immediately because this bishop is attacking your king. So it's pinned. And we have castles by black. Bishop to e3 now developing the final minor piece that white had and bishop to g4 pinning the knight. We have h3 attacking this, uh, this bishop and you can give up your uh, light square bishop if you want but it's not really a good idea because then the queen will probably capture here on f3. The queen will put a nice uh, attack against this knight even though it's defended but it, it will not be defended for too long. <clears throat> so you can even uh, you can even move your uh, queen to to this g4 square and you can even push this pawn further. So there are a lot of opportunities for white and it's not really a good idea to capture. But it's not really a mistake or anything, you just have to play precise chess. We have bishop to h5, retreating with the bishop. And also if you capture, there's another thing I forgot to mention, if, uh, if you capture with the g-pawn, then black has already castled, so, and white has not castled, so he can castle either side. And usually if this g-pawn uh, is, is not here on this g-file, then you get a semi-open g-file, and you can put your rook here, and control this nice uh, g-file, you can attack it, put some pressure on this uh, backward pawn and create some amazing play. <clears throat> also you have this dark square bishop so you can put the dark square bishop on this h6 square and it's completely fine. Which is another reason why it's not really a good idea to capture this knight here on f3. And that's exactly what Sergei analyzed and he just moved his bishop back, bishop to h5. Now we have queen to c2 putting the queen on nice diagonal, putting some pressure on this backward h7 pawn once this, uh, this bishop retreats. It's going to have a wonderful pressure <clears throat> and right now this knight is attacked twice. You have this knight attacking and uh, of course this pawn is defending it but you have the queen that is also attacking and uh, you will be up a pawn. So black is left with no choice but to capture the knight and become a knight capturer. You have knight takes c3 and you get pawn takes c b pawn takes c3 and now you have a nice chain of pawns and once you put these pawns further it's, it's going to become a wonderful pawn chain. But uh, I don't know if that happens in the game. Let's just, uh, let's just see what happens. We have f6. 
immediately trying to create some weaknesses and e takes f6. Since the e pawn is, was way too forward, Aronian uh, decided to give up this, um, this extra forward e pawn <clears throat> in order to create some weaknesses on this f file. Now you have queen takes f6 and bishop to e2, rook a to e8 and simply castling finally that uh, you know this pawn is not uh, not going anywhere and you even have bishop but to capture this uh, this knight so you don't really have to worry about it and finally you can castle kingside castle which is pretty safe because you have a lot of pieces supporting the defense of your king so that's a that's a good plan you have h6 and rook a to e1 and all of these this position is completely equal queen to d6 it's still fine black is trying to create some counterplay he has a nice uh, couple of uh, uh, a couple of rooks eyeing on the king side currently this uh, f file is just a semi open file but this rook can definitely come into the game it can uh, even double up on this e file and try to put some pressure on it <clears throat> also your bishop is nicely controlling this diagonal as well so white's light square bishop has to stay on this diagonal just to put some defense and we have bishop to c1 so both players having a lot of chances are trying to play it safe bishop to c1 and now bishop to a5 attacking the spawn you have queen to d2 voluntarily get getting in the way of um, of <coughs> of this bishop's attack because this piece won't be immediately attacked twice so it's it's completely fine but this also would provoke any so one of the captures if the if the rook can come to this position and then capture then it would be a completely fine position it would be a nice attack for black so you have to be really careful rook to e4 that's exactly what Karyakin is trying to do he's now triple attacking this pawn you have one Two and um, you don't really you don't really have a lot of defenses it's a double attack I'm sorry and it's defended by the knight and by the pawn but pawn cannot really defend but the, because the pawn is pinned to this queen but this is exactly what Aronian wanted as he played bishop to d1 he did not even try to go uh, defending the pawn because he said this is completely fine position I, I want this <coughs> And you get bishop takes f3, first eliminating the knight because the knight was defending your pawn. Now you have to eliminate your bishop, so bishop takes f3. In this way, white now has a bishop pair and black gave up his bishop pair. He only has a dark square bishop now. You have rook takes d4, you get a pawn, you also attack the queen. Remember, queen cannot really capture because this knight is nicely guarding the rook. And this pawn cannot capture because your queen is hanging here as well. If the pawn captures, the pawn is pinned. So, queen to c2. Simply moving back. So there was not, no, not really a point in, uh, in moving this back, uh, back and forth to d2. Or was there? This was exactly Aronian's plan. We have rook to c4. Bishop to a3. And this is a very important position in the game. <clears throat> because now you have uh, this this bishop that is placed here on a3 without any protection so what are you going to do are you going to capture this bishop remember the bishop is also attacking your queen so you have an option to capture it if you move the queen away you can move the queen if you want but then you attack, uh, attack it's, your rook is attacked behind it so you have to lose one of the pieces or what you can do is you can put the bishop here to b4 square, your knight here to b4 square, <clears throat> or your rook here to b4 square. What are you going to do? You have so many different options and uh, this is a perfect time for you guys to pause the video and analyze this move because it's, uh, it, will, it, it will either win you the game or it will uh, continue to be equal game. So I'm going to show you what uh, what should have been played. Knight to b4 should have been played. And uh, there are various moves, so let's analyze it one by one. Let's go back a move. 
what will happen if queen captures this uh, this bishop here on a3 so let's show you that variation queen captures here on a3 <clears throat> this is complete advantage for white now again pause the video and try to find why it's advantage for white um, this exercise will help you analyze the games and also analyze um, how and why not to make such bad moves simple solution is because bishop takes d5 you get a check now you have to move the king and this is the only square you can move the king to because uh, if not you have to put a rook and uh, there is no point in putting a rook because so you just uh, simply move the king king to h8 now bishop takes c4 and you get queen takes c3 queen takes c3 bishop takes c3 and uh, <coughs> rook to e4 after this position white is uh, a lot ahead because you have white has a rook against a knight and uh, in, in any of the end games you always favor a rook over a knight so that is why in this position queen captures is not a good idea for black okay so what's the next move uh, moving the queen obviously is not a good idea because again you're gonna get um, this rook that captures and let's show you why knight to um, <clears throat> knight to this b4 square is a good idea because now of course your queen is attacked but you don't really have to move your queen all you have to do is bishop takes b4 you get bishop takes b4 and now all you have to do is play queen to d1 now you are attacking this pawn twice you are also attacking this bishop here and this is completely completely fine position you can even play rook takes uh, rook takes c3 then you will get um, you will simply get bishop takes d5 with a check you have to again move your king king to h8 rook to <coughs> rook to e6 again attacking the queen and uh, this is completely fine this is an equal position but unfortunately Karyakin couldn't find this and this is exactly what uh, Levon Aronian was hoping to happen because after bishop to a3 he played the incorrect move that is defending this position by putting the bishop here on b4 he just thought okay fine um, I'm putting my bishop after you capture my bishop I'm just gonna capture it with the knight and it's completely fine position you cannot capture it back with the pawn because your uh, queen is hanging but he missed one critical move uh, and I'm going to show it to you we have queen to d3 not immediately capturing but queen to d3 now you have this um, this threat of <coughs> excuse me either queen captures here on d5 bishop captures here on d5 and uh, once that's probably the bishop captures here on d5 then you will have uh, you will have attack on the king and this rook will be hanging plus you already have an attack on this bishop as well so it's a, it's a this was the losing move and from here on it's a, it's an uphill battle for Sergei Karyakin you get rook takes f3 <coughs> and you simply have queen takes f3 we get bishop takes a3 and now rook to e8 with the check and this was the most important position because now you have a very active rook you have to move the king the only possible square is to go here on h7 and then you're going to get queen to f5 with the check and for uh, for the price of two bishops you have a very active rook a queen that is attacking your um, you are a king. So this was the final position on the board as Levon Aronian realized there is nothing else he can do and he resigned in this position. He resigned mainly because he knew what followed and he knew that he couldn't really keep up with, uh, with a lot of uh, attacks from the white. Mainly because uh, after this you get queen to g6. This is the best defense. You have to give up your queen because after this white is going to simply put his rook here on h8 then you have to capture the rook after rook captures you relieve the king of its uh, defensive duties uh, with respect to the queen and you simply get queen captures now you have a, a rook against a rook and a queen against a knight and a bishop which is not at all enough compensation 
now you are threatening a check here and then uh, you're just going to go go to b8 square you are going to attack a lot of pieces and uh, there's nothing black can do i will show you a few moves we get rook to e4 queen to f f5 knight to e7 now attacking the queen and defending the spawn but you simply get uh, queen to f8 with a check you have to move the king king to f7 now you get queen to b8 now you are attacking these three pawns <clears throat> you get bishop to d6 defending one of the pawns and now you simply get uh, queen captures here on b7 you can even play a4 and um, you can play rook to d1 you are trying to put some pressure and here black will simply attack your pawn by playing uh, rook to c4 you can defend it by playing rook to d3 and uh, all of your pieces are finally uh, defended you don't really have any attacks that black can black can go after so in it's simple why uh, Sergei Karyakin resigned in this position I can go a little bit further if you guys want after uh, after this position rook to d1 I think we made a couple of more after this position you can play rook to f4 you have queen to b1 now nicely now uh, putting this queen on nice diagonal so you have to move the king king to f8 g3 rook to f5 and queen to b5 now finally attacking this pawn you get king to h7 and attacking the pawn capturing the pawn queen takes a5 you have eliminated one of the pawns now h5 you get uh, a4 and h4 you have um, g4 you're pushing it pushing the pawn and also attacking this rook and rook simply goes back to f8 you have to keep the rook on this file because you have to uh, you have to defend from a lot of threats that uh, that, that this king can come under <coughs> and rook to e3 simply attacking this knight for now it's defended but the next move definitely is going to be um, something like you you're going to bring the queen behind this knight behind this uh, rook and you're going to attack this knight that's basically the plan the idea here rook to f6 queen to b5 c5 c6 and now queen to e2 finally you're attack you're double attacking uh, this uh, this knight rook to f8 Rook takes e7, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7 and rook to a8. Finally, you have eliminated the knight and the bishop. And from here on, it's completely winning position. You can even, uh, you can even give, a, give a check here by queen takes h4 with a check. You move the king, you move this pawn forward, g5, and now you are nicely defending your pawn as well. Slowly but surely you're going to gobble up these two pawns, march your king up the board if you wish, <coughs> attack the pawns, gobble them up and this is uh, completely winning for white. I don't even have to show it from here on. So a wonderful game for Levon Aronian against uh, world champion Sergei Karyakin. And uh, Levon Aronian after this so had pretty amazing tournament. He won a lot of games and he was declared the winner of uh, of this tournament that was happening in Bucharest, which was the Blitz and Rapid section. So that's it from this video. I want to thank all my subscribers for subscribing to the channel. I greatly appreciate your support. Namaste. See you next time.